Hey everyone, this is Teresa from Base 10 Montessori, and today I'm going to go over how to do addition with the golden beads. And in AMI Montessori, we call this the collective exercises. So let's start out by talking about how to lay out the materials for this work. So right here we have a diagram of the addition layout, and this picture, this diagram, is taken from my Montessori album. So this is what I had to draw for my training. And as you can see on the left hand side, we have this light colored mat and that mat is going to go on the floor and it has the larger number cards. And then we have three smaller mats right here with smaller cards. Now for this demonstration, I'm going to show what it looks like to do this with three children for the presentation. So that's why there are three smaller mats. Now you can also put these on a table, which is what I'm going to do for this presentation as well. And then you'll see this large black bowl. That's just a bowl or a basket that you need to put all of your materials in once you collect them. And I'll show you what that looks like as we go through it. And then these boards down at the bottom, these three boards down at the bottom, that's supposed to be the board that you collect your golden beads and numbers on and then the little round circles are supposed to be the cups that you put the golden beads in. I know it doesn't look very fancy. My skills drawing on a computer are very limited so this is about as complex as I got for my training. Uh, a lot of people chose to draw them by hand. I thought this would be easier and honestly to tell you the truth think it might have been better if I had tried to draw them by hand. I will go more into detail on what this looks like and how to set this up in just a moment, but let's just do a quick overview of this setup and then we'll get into the details. So at the very end, these are the last three steps in the addition process. So at the top, you'll see that the children will collect their numbers and their cards on their trays and then you'll put them all into the bowl you're going to put all the numbers together and then you're going to count them and that's the basic idea but again we're going to go through this in detail so you'll see what it looks like officially from an ami perspective and right here this is a picture of my bank that i have set up in my house it's very small because i'm just using this for presentation so everything fits on this little tiny stand right here and this is my large mat that I have set up on the floor that we're going to be using for this presentation. So everything is set up, everything is going in order, and we go up to 9,000 on this large mat. So for your students, you're going to give them the tiny cards. They're going to get these smaller cards. So child one, child two, and child three are each going to have their own set of cards and they can go either to a smaller mat or they can go to a table in the classroom and they can set up their cards just like this and their cards are only going to go to 3,000 so keep that in mind their cards are not going to go to 9,000 because we don't want to go to 10,000 with this so their cards are going to be limited so child one will set up their cards at their table child two is going to set up cards at a different table or on a mat and then child three will do the exact same thing so they all have their own setup and sometimes they need a little help with this sometimes it gets a little messy so this is where maybe some of the older kids in the classroom can help them keep their numbers straight or help them get organized so this is a good time to utilize the older children in your classroom if they need to come back to the bank game but you don't really want to present this to them again in the same way. So get your older kids involved, have them help out the younger kids, have them set up this order with them, and that will just help everybody in the community feel connected and also give them a different perspective on what it's like to go through the bank game or the collective exercises from a different perspective. So as I begin this lesson, I'm going to sit next to the large mat with the large number cards and a second mat which is empty. And I'm going to give each child a number. So the first child, I'll give the number, let's say, 1,321. And I'll ask that child to bring me 1,321 in both the numbers and the quantity, numbers and beads. So the first child's going to go to their table or wherever they have set up their number cards. They're going to go get their numbers. And then they're going to go to the bank and get their beads. So here's child one. And here is child one going to the bank to get their quantity. So we want to make sure that the numbers and the quantity match. 
So then the child will come find me and I'll be sitting down next to that empty mat with just the bowl or the basket. I have that second empty mat set up and the child will bring me their quantity and their symbol and we'll go over it. And then I will take their quantity, their golden beads, and I'll put it in a large bowl or a large basket. After we dump all the golden beads into the basket or the bowl, we're gonna set our numbers to the side for the first child. And then we're gonna go to the second child's numbers in quantity. So the second child will also have a table set up, so I will give the second child a number as well. Let's say I give them the number 2,234. And then they're gonna go to the bank and get their golden beads as well. And then we dump it all into the basket. So now we have all of the quantity from the first child, and we've combined it with the second child all into that basket. And of course, we're gonna place the numbers to the side as well, along with the first child's. And then we'll move on to child three, and I will tell that child, can you bring me 1,142 in both number and quantity. So they will go to their table and get their number and then they'll go to the bank and get their quantity. And they'll bring it to me at the rug or the mat and we'll dump it into the basket. So now we have the quantity from all three children. It's all in that basket and we have the numbers all together as well. So that's how we set this up. Now I do wanna switch over to my other camera and show you what it looks like to present the next part of this lesson, which is combining and counting. Okay, so here we are. We have our numbers that each child brought us and we have all of our golden beads. Well, mine are kind of wooden, but that's okay. Some of us have the wooden set because they're a little cheaper, right? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take all of these beads out. So the children have brought them to us, we've checked it, we've asked, what did you bring me? We've counted it, we've checked it, we verified it. And now we're ready for the fun part. Let's take out our beads. We're gonna take out our units. Now, if this was a presentation in the classroom, I would have the children all around me setting these up and organizing them for me. But today, I guess I'm gonna to have to be the one that organizes it. We're gonna put our units over here. Let's put our thousand cubes over here. Here's our tens. Our hundreds. All right, let me make sure I can do this so you can see it. Get our hundreds right here. I'm gonna stack these so that you can actually see them. And let me move some stuff out of the way. So once we've organized it, we can have the children begin to count them. So let's start with our units. How many are in here? Let's find out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven units. Now, remember that we have that large mat set up with those large number cards. At this point in time, I'm going to ask one of the children, or maybe if I have a helper, like an older child in the classroom that's helping me out, I might ask them to be the banker and go get the number. So I'm going to say, can you go get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can you get the card that has the number seven on it? So let's go get that right now. Let's go over to our mat and we're gonna bring the number seven back. Let's do the same thing with the tens. Now remember, we started off counting differently with the tens. We started counting one ten, two tens, three tens, four tens, five tens, six tens, seven tens, eight tens, nine tens. Now we started doing that but we really want to make sure and switch to the correct language. So let's count 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So I'm going to ask my banker to go get 90 from those large number cards. This is what 90 looks like. So we're going to put that right there. Now let's do the same thing for the hundreds. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600. Let's go get 600 from our large number mat. This is what 600 looks like. Now let's count our thousands. We've got 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 
4,000. Let's go get 4,000 from our large numbers. That is what 4,000 looks like. Now we get to do something that's super fun. This is my favorite part. going to do the slide. So we're going to stack them up all on this end, stack them up and slide it. So when we do this, we're going to tell the story of addition, but I'm going to pause for a second to reset my mat so that it's a little bit easier to see so I can tell you the story of addition. All right, let's tell the story of addition. So at the beginning of the story, we had the first child and the first child brought me 1,321 in both numbers and in quantity. Along came the second child. And the second child brought me 2,234 in both numbers and quantity. And along came child number three. And child number three brought me 1,142 in both numbers and quantity. And when they brought me all these beads together and we combined them all, we made this giant pile of beads. And we made this really big number. So when we take 1,321 and we join it with 2,234 and we join it with 1,142, we get this really big number that's 4,697. So addition is when we take these smaller numbers. Do you see these smaller numbers that are on these smaller cards? When we take two or more of the smaller numbers and we join them together, we put them all together and join them together to make an even bigger number, we are doing addition. And that is the story of addition. So that is how we present addition with the collective exercises. Now, when we get to doing exchanging, the only thing that's going to change about this presentation is when we get to this part, when we're organizing these beads and we are counting them up, if we get to the units and we count more than nine, we just say something very special is going to happen. When we get to 10, we have to stop and exchange. We have to go to the bank. And then you can have one of the children be the one that goes to the bank and does the exchanging. Now, it's okay to be as theatrical as you want with these presentations. They should be fun. We should be telling the story of math. We should be telling the story of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So we can have fun with this. We can send them to the bank. We can have fun by putting even a little stop sign on our rug that says stop and exchange. So feel free to make this fun. This is a game. The collective exercises are a social opportunity. They're an activity that the children get to do collaboratively. They get to work together and we can use our older children to help us too. So don't be afraid to do that. So anyways, that's all I have for you today. Hopefully I've remembered to show you everything, but in case I forgot something, feel free to leave a comment down below. Hopefully this has been fun for you. Hopefully this will help you in your classroom. And if you have any questions, any comments, any concerns, just leave a comment down below and I'll be happy to get back to you as soon as possible. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video.